They are two of the most debated issues in the state of New Jersey right now. The S2 legislation or school funding formula and the immunization bill, which has brought protesters from both aisles outside the Grove Restaurant on Hooper Avenue in Tom's River, outside of the Ocean County Mayor's Association's monthly meeting, where the guest speaker is State Senate President Steve Sweeney, who spoke on both issues to us and where things currently lie. State Senate President Steve Sweeney said to date the school funding formula has played out exactly how he thought it would. He says school districts like Tom's River who are set to lose millions is a part of it because they don't have the students to warrant funding the way it had been. Tom's River has 1,600 less kids than when we started the school funding formula. So how do you justify keeping that money if the kids aren't there? You know, dollars are sparse everywhere. Now, if they had the 1,600 kids... By all means, but if the children aren't in the seats, they're not in the building, their, their school buildings are underutilized. Like they're at 82% capacity, where they were at 95% capacity in 2009. All the way around, enrollment's down. Now, I've said I'm always willing, and we will, with legislation, every five years review the school funding formula to see whether it works or not, or where it needs to be adjusted. Because I do believe... This needs to be a living document so that if something isn't working, it should be adjusted. Legislation should never not be looked at again. But no, it's, look, no one was screaming when 70% of the school kids were being underfunded in the state. And, you know, why should school districts that don't have the children keep the funding for the children they don't have? Tom's River schools are in trouble with potentially having to make cuts because Sweeney says they have a surplus of funds and that they've had nine years of overfunding. They've been hiring people, more staff, when they should have been attritioning staff. Listen, what I'm saying is if you don't have the children, you should be shrinking your school districts through attrition. I don't want to see people losing their jobs and being fired or anything else. But unfortunately, when we're done, when we finish phasing this out, they'll be overfunded 16 years. And, oh, by the way, we're bringing them to 100% funding. It's not we're underfunding them. We're bringing them down to 100% funding. That's the difference. They've been overfunded. So I understand, but they knew the school district was shrinking. Why didn't they address it that way, knowing you don't have the kids? Maybe you can do away with the classroom. Maybe you can close the building. They haven't done any of that yet. And when we looked at their surplus, it's huge. And, in fact, we were told, and I'm checking on it, when, when we got them an extra aid, they said they didn't need it this year. Sweeney says this formula is based on weighted social and economic issues. And what we've looked at is, with Tom's River, pretty much locally Tom's River has one of the lowest tax rates in Ocean County because we were overfunding them in the state. So locally, and no one likes to say raise taxes because we don't, but... Why is it okay for my town to be paying so much to cover their school and this town not because they weren't funding it properly? Listen, there, when we did the legislation to give 40 districts the ability to increase their taxes up to the money that was being lost, it was the 40 districts that weren't funding where they were supposed to from the beginning. They were under adequacy funding. So these aren't just made up numbers. We have them, we can show them. Brick schools are set to lose a similar amount of funding to Tom's River, but Herbertsville Elementary School may soon close its doors for good due to a lack of funding. That brought Melissa Munnings and others to make a plea for funding. We're, we're early into you know the, the year with budget cuts and they're already closing schools. I don't, I don't, you know, it's not a Herbertsville problem, it's a district problem. So they're closing Herbertsville um, to, you know, to help with this budget cut, but Brick is losing $22 million. It only costs $1.8 to run Herbertsville School. That's a spit in the ocean. We're hoping to get attention for people to stand up. I mean, your job as a parent is to stand up for your kid, and people have no idea what's happening and what's going on here. A bill that would toughen exemptions for immunization requirements, including religious exemptions, may soon be posted for a vote. The bill itself is causing concern among parents and communities, but Senate President Sweeney says this bill is the right thing to do. No religion, no major religion opposes vaccinations. Just so you know, I'm a Catholic. They don't oppose vaccinations. So using a religious exemption when the religion doesn't oppose it. Now, I think doctors should have a right if a child has a health condition to, you know, to exempt a child. Absolutely, a health condition should be. 
But what if, we had a we had a pediatric oncologist came and testify before the Senate. He said he can't let his child, his patient, go back to school if there's a kid in class that hasn't been vaccinated because he's putting that child's life at risk. Why is it that every single medical group in this state and this nation support vaccinations? The argument against isn't based on science, and it's based in the medical exemptions based on, I mean, the, the, the religious exemptions based on when they were using fetal tissue. So, look, I believe in vaccinations. I believe we can slow the schedule of vaccinations. They're, that's allowed now. People are allowed to extend that. But look, 95% of kids get vaccinated. CDC, we're under that 95% level now. And we have to worry about public health. So, you know, banging the drums and coming out and protesting, they can do all that. They're entitled to do all that. I, I believe they have a right to do whatever they want, but I have a right to do what's responsible for the people to make sure this state stays healthy. Sweeney cites recent measles outbreaks, including a recurring one in Lakewood in 2019, as an example for why this bill is needed. This is a health concern. We had an outbreak in this count of measles in Lakewood. Uh, measles was, you know, deemed gone, eliminated. It's back now. We had five major airports over the holidays, had measles scares. Kevin Barry, president of the civic rights group First Freedom, says parents know their children better than anyone, and they should make the vaccination decision. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve doesn't know uh, the students, the, the children of New Jersey better than the parents of the children of New Jersey do, and neither, neither does any government. And that is the international human rights and bioethics standard, is that the individual takes the decision, not the state. It's literally a fascist policy to have the state decide how to treat someone rather than the individual. State Senate President Steve Sweeney says he plans to meet with Tom's River School officials in the near future to discuss the S-2 legislation. And as for the immunization bill becoming a reality, it's all when there's enough votes. In Tom's River, I'm Vin Ebenu for the Town Square News Network.